Hi, I'm Rebecca Reed, a pastry chef, a wife, and a very hardworking mom. Over 10 years ago, I moved to New York City to follow my baking dreams. I studied under some of the greatest chefs in the world, have a master's of the pastry arts, and even won a little show you may have heard of called Chopped Sweets. Here in Florida, my life is crazy busy, but I'm so passionate about what I do. I love to bring my professional experiences into people's home kitchens. Baking can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. At the end of the day, it's all about spreading joy and making the world a sweeter place. Welcome to Plated with me, Rebecca Reed. Hey friends, welcome to my kitchen. I am so excited to have Danielle Downing bake with me today. She's a blogger, influencer, and has this classic style I've admired for a while. So today is all about dressing up a classic tiramisu. Danielle is a style and fashion influencer living here in Florida. I'm so inspired by her blog shop, Dandy. Her heart is to encourage women to embrace the beauty that God has given them. She definitely gets that when people look good, they feel good. And you know me, I'm all about making things that look good that make people feel good too. Danielle, I am so excited you're here in my kitchen. Thank you so much for having me. I have this apron for you because I planned on this making some tiramisu. This is so cute, I can't wait. Let's get baking. Tiramisu is a menu staple with layers of creamy mousse, coffee-soaked ladyfingers, and dust of cocoa powder, what's not to love? But you know me, we are gonna give it a little more style. We'll be making our own coffee and cocoa nib dintel garnish, which makes for a chic accessory. We'll give it a polished look with all of its layers and textures by serving it in a beautiful glass farine. I've got all of our ingredients here so we can make a coffee gelée. Yum! Do you like to drink coffee? I love coffee. I feel like I work 24 seven, so it keeps me going. Yes, it's so good. And I love to incorporate it into desserts. I know you're all about like bringing the style and something that really just like jazzes things up a love little it. bit. So we're definitely gonna do that today. Okay, what do we have here? What is all this? This is just cold brew coffee. And My favorite. If you want to make your own coffee, you absolutely could. Or here, I just bought. Who's got bought, time for that? Yeah, cold brew <laughs> done, and we're gonna add this to our pot. Okay. Ooh. And this ingredient here is some agar agar. Okay. And Explain that to me. <laughs> <laughs> These days, so many people are vegetarian, even vegan. So using agar agar instead of gelatin is a great substitute. It's actually a derivative of seaweed, so it's vegetarian. And then here is a little bit of instant coffee powder. Okay. You can throw it right All in. All right, let's do this. I'm not very good at cooking or baking, so who knows what's gonna happen today. <laughs> you are in good hands. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I have faith that whatever Danielle and I make is going to look good. Okay, what's next? So this last ingredient is actually your non-dairy coffee creamer. It's kind of fun to impart like a little bit more flavor into something with okay, coffee. Okay. So this is actually caramel macchiato Ooh, coffee powder. Mm -hmm. Yum. I didn't even know they made dry powder and flavors. Yes. That's awesome. So we're gonna sneak a little extra flavor in there. And we are just going to turn our pot on and bring it up to a okay. simmer. We can give it we a little whisk. whisk. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Faster, slower. Oh, Am that's I okay? perfect. Yeah, you don't right. have to stress over this one. <laughs> when I was looking at all of your stuff, I was like trying to, you know, see what you're all about, but I kept shopping. I know. My husband it's was like, you have to very stop. dangerous. It's very dangerous. It's very like, dangerous. I am doing research for the show right now, yes. and I bought three dresses. I love it. <laughs> so much fun. I've been following Danielle for a while now, so you know I'm all about that shop dandy. And of course, for the show, I had to get on there and, you know, do some research. You did a good job. That looks really good. Can you start to smell it? I can smell it. It smells so good. When you're using agar to set something, you just want your whole mixture to come up to a simmer, maybe a minute or two, but that's it. I wanted to make something that was really beautiful and had lots of different layers and textures. It's like when you're building it's an like, outfit. It, absolutely. It pulls all of it together, mm -hmm. just like the flavors, yes. 
A vireen is just a glass that has a little foot, something kind of small, and they are really pretty. They're gorgeous for a cute little dessert just like this. I am gonna pour this into our pitcher just so it's a little easier to get into everything else. Don't burn yourself. There we go. I almost just want to drink that. <laughs> it Seriously, good. it's like hot chocolate or something, yes. you know? Then we're going to take this. It looks so nice and steamy. And I'm just yes. going to kind of evenly pour So how it. much do you put in each glass? I Does really... it have to be perfect or? It doesn't. I okay. just like to have that nice bottom layer. Okay. So, so you're doing like a little inch maybe? Yeah. A little more than that on some. It doesn't have to be perfect, which is better. Yes. When you don't know what you're doing all the time. <laughs> For this gelée to set up, we'll just stick all of our varines into the refrigerator. This will probably take about half an hour for everything to completely set. I've got all of our ingredients here for our tiramisu mousse. Okay. Have you ever made tiramisu before? I have before? not. I have not. So this might be the trickiest part. Oh gosh. But I'm gonna break it down for you. Okay. We're gonna need some really nice hot boiling water. Okay. And we're gonna make a hot water bath. A bath. A bath. So are we putting it in the water? We are just gonna put our bowl on top of oh, our pot. Oh my gosh. Then we'll just use all of this steam that we're generating okay. by our simmering water okay. to cook our egg yolk okay. along with some sugar. Yum. Yes, I know. <laughs> you have me at sugar. That's the good stuff. You make a hot water bath just by taking a small pot and bringing a couple of inches of water up to a simmer. This will start to generate steam. We definitely have some steam. Yes, we do. <laughs> so we are ready. I'm going to add our sugar to Yum. our egg yolk. I don't know about you, but I really don't like any extra dishes. Like, I don't like that whole Less thing. mess is best. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Less mess, definitely the best. <laughs> so I just have my whisk, and it's actually my whisk attachment for oh, my stand mixer. Oh, I see what you're saying. So that way you don't have to clean a whole another tool. Very smart. I will just like whisk yeah. this together a little bit, okay. and then we're gonna heat it up over that double boiler okay. for just a couple of minutes. I like to heat up the eggs over that hot water bath so that way your egg protein will actually start to stretch out and be able to hold even more air to make our mousse so, so light and fluffy. That seemed intimidating, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad, right? No, I think I can handle that. You know you're ready to move your mixture off of your hot water bath when all of your sugar has dissolved and your mixture is nice and hot. And then I am just gonna use my stand mixer. And this guy scares me. <gasps> the stand mixer? Do yes, you have one? I have one and I've never used it. Really? Yes. Oh, don't be afraid. It's not that bad. <laughs> we'll need to mix our eggs until they turn a really nice pale yellow color. This will mean that we've incorporated a bunch of air into it. <sighs> this looks excellent. It just takes a couple of minutes okay. for Look, the color it totally is. changed. It's beautiful. It's so white. Yes, it's really, really nice and light. So it looks really good. Yeah. And by incorporating all of this air, it's going to make our mousse really, really nice and light. And yummy. Even more with our next step. Okay. So we've got to get this into this bowl here. Oh gosh, me? Oh yes. Hey, if you say so. One of my favorite utensils, especially for something like this, is my nice soft silicone spatula. It works great because it helps me to scrape out every last little bit. I feel like I always have to like use my fingers, but you yes. do not have to, which you shouldn't if you're cooking for people. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> Don't worry, no fingers needed here. Using our spatula, we'll add the cream cheese, just a little more sugar, and the caramel macchiato dry coffee powder. Then turn the mixer up to medium high. You'll wanna mix this one with some speed. You know you're done mixing when everything has completely come together and it's all the same throughout. You don't want any lumps of cream cheese remaining. I can really smell that caramel macchiato, I love it. I know, so yummy. Right, totally smooth. It almost looks like cream cheese frosting. It does, which is my favorite frosting. Oh. It's so good. So good. <laughs> All right, we can add the heavy cream okay, in our ramekin. Mm -hmm. Into which bowl? Into this, this one. This one. Yep. Okay. Ah. 
Great job. <laughs> no spill. There we go. Oh, you put her back in? Okay. Yes. Now we're gonna whip the cream into the cream cheese. Okay. And then our final step will be to fold everything together. Don't be scared of your stand mixer. It's one of the best tools. It does all the really hard work for you. We want our mousse to be really nice and smooth and creamy and really light. By whipping up those eggs and also whipping up the cream and cream cheese, we're gonna incorporate a bunch of air in there. It's gonna make the texture really, really light and smooth. That's it. Oh, it looks so good. Am I allowed to taste some before we? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. Let me see if I can find. Oh yes, okay. I love it when people are so excited to taste something that they've gotta try it in the middle of the recipe. Oh my gosh. So good, you can taste the caramel. Mm -hmm. It tastes so good. Oh good. Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh. This caramel macchiato coffee creamer powder, you're not gonna find in every tiramisu. This is one of those little flavor touches that makes all the difference. All right, okay, so this next, next step, I'll show you a technique that I use all of the time. It's a really good one to have. It okay. is to be able to fold. So we're gonna fold these like two folding things clothes. Together. Yes, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yes, so this is my version of folding. Okay, I love it. <laughs> show me what you do here. When I think about folding, it has nothing to do with sweaters. It's really all about just gently incorporating two mixtures together. So okay. I like to kind of cut straight through the bowl and then fold it over. So there is like an actual technique to it. Yes. Instead of like just turning it all around. Mm -hmm. So what's the purpose of the folding? So instead of just taking a whisk and just like vigorously whisking uh -huh. everything together, this really light, gentle motion will help us not to pop all of those air bubbles that we just worked ah, so hard to incorporate. Okay. So that's it. And right now it looks maybe a little bit streaky. Like I can still see some um, of the cream cheese mixture that's separate from the egg mixture. Okay, mm -hmm. I when see what you're talking about. Yeah, just still a little bit of that streakiness. We are going to add more? The remaining part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Yum. So we will just continue to fold. Actually, okay. do you want to try oh, it too? Okay, so I cut mm -hmm. and fold. Flip over. And then you can try to pull Turn this hand to <laughs> yeah. So many things at one time. It's almost like like rubbing your stomach and patting your head. You know, it's like you kind of have to get used to doing two different things with your hands and it's tricky. How I think am I about doing? pulling your left hand like from like this, nine this to way. six on a bowl. Oh, wait, I'm so butchering no, this. You're good. <laughs> it's funny, you really had that like fold over technique great. Okay. And then you see like I'm right handed like okay. you. So I take my hand from like. And pull it towards yeah, you? Yeah, like nine o'clock okay. to noon. Okay. If the bowl is a clock. Okay. This is looking really good. It does, it looks so good. So nice yeah, you're and so good light. <laughs> well, that's what I do. <laughs> and at this point, you wouldn't want to continue to fold or whisk or any okay. of that. You really want it to just come together okay. so that way we're not popping any of those air bubbles. Okay. So this is all set. Now we get to bring in the lady fingers. Oh. And more coffee. <laughs> Our coffee gelée is set up now. We can bring it out of the refrigerator and start building our tiramisu on top. We've got our coffee gelée back. Okay. I have even more coffee, that tiramisu mousse, some lady fingers, a whole bunch of good stuff. We're about to build this thing. Let's do it. We need our soak first for those lady fingers. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever had these before, this I have not. Are they cookies? Yeah, it's okay. like a cookie, but they're really nice and crunchy. Ooh. I can make them from scratch. Of but course you can. I mean, it's <laughs> like one of the things that I could do, mm -hmm. but Shortcut. honestly, mm -hmm. like even if I'm gonna do this at home, I buy the store-bought ladyfingers. Okay. That's right. I do. I buy the store ball lady fingers. Secrets are out. Yes. You know I love to make everything from scratch, but every once in a while there's a product that's just really good. Lady fingers are just one of them. They come all nice and dried out and they are the perfect thing to soak up all of that coffee. If we had freshly baked lady fingers, they would be delicious, but they would be way too soggy. So I have our cold brew coffee here, and then there's a little bit more of that instant espresso powder. You can dump that right in. I dump this mm -hmm. in with this. Yes. Okay. 
Coffee Perfect. And coffee. Next, we have a little bit of sugar. You can add the sugar. sugar. Okay. And then oh. I have a little bit of a coffee liqueur. Ooh. And if you want to add this, you totally can. I know you build a lot of drinks and like yes. really fun yes. things. Yes. So you can totally add your coffee liqueur if you want to. Okay. And if you don't want to, you no can also deal. omit that. Okay. And it's really not going to make a huge difference. Okay. Perfect, that looks right. so good. Right I'm just gonna use a lady finger, just kind of bring everything yeah. together. Ooh, it lightened up a little bit. Yes. Okay. And this is the part, we're gonna get a little dirty. Okay. So have you had your apron on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're gonna soak all of those lady fingers in this coffee soak. Okay. And then we're gonna start to layer them in our verine, oh, our glass. So Okay, you and go first. Yes. Tell me how it's done. These will actually absorb. Well, dunkaroo. Yes, <laughs> the liquid really quickly. So that's it. I just kind of like dunk okay. them in. And you just, and then lay them out to kind of like dry mm -hmm. a little bit. Ooh, all the bubbles. Yeah. Okay. I kind of like to have that extra sheet pan there, so that way I can lay the soaked lady fingers on it. Okay. And then I can sort of layer this in layers <laughs> and have a whole little process to it. You could dunk them and then go ahead and get them in the glasses, Place them. but I like to be organized and kind of thoughtful okay. about the way everything comes okay. together so we get our textures just right. I gotcha, I gotcha. Don't overthink it. It just takes a quick dunk in that coffee soak to get all that coffee flavor. Now we will just layer everything. Okay. And I like to go in with maybe a little bit of the mousse at the very bottom. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. And then we will add our lady fingers that right have been soaked right on top. I can't yeah. wait to see how you place those because I cannot imagine that yet. Are they standing or flat? Or? So you could do it either way. Okay. I actually experimented with both and I kind of like both of them. I know right now it might look like just kind of a wild dollop. Okay. But after we They'll get everything smooth. placed in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get that perfect layer. Yes. <laughs> Danielle is all about layering when it comes to her outfits. I like to layer things too, especially for my desserts. You get a bunch of different textures that all come together. And then you can just kind of press oh, it on the wall. against the sides mm -hmm. so you can see it better. Yes. Ah, I because, see where you're going. Yes, <laughs> it's all about that visual, okay. especially at this point. It's like, we know we have all of these different textures and layers that taste so good. Mm -hmm. We have to make it look really good. Right. So using the glass is awesome because you actually get to see everything all that's in there. Mm -hmm. Typically, tiramisu is made in like a casserole A big, dish. okay, mm -hmm. okay. And well, well, that's still delicious. You just miss, you miss out. the beauty. Yes. Uh -huh. So you get to kind of like. And then also, I it. feel like this is a little bit more approachable because you don't have as much waste. Because like, what if you only have a family of three? You don't want to make that whole dish and then it gets soggy. So this is just like the perfect size amount. Save some for later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. It's like hopefully really approachable, almost like your stuff. Oh my gosh, everything that I see that you post online, it's so beautiful. Thank you. But you also work with so many brands that are like so affordable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's Relatable. Awesome. I mean, yes. cute and comfortable is what I always say. Yeah. Yes, that's what it's all about. And hopefully these will be very, very cute and comfortable to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Baking doesn't have to be so complicated. Some recipes should be effortless. And you can break them a little bit too if that to helps just it to go in there. Get around the glass a little better. And okay. I like that you're doing that like horizontal stripe, but if you wanted to do vertical, you could uh -huh. too. You'll probably be able to speak to that even more. It's like but a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> I almost feel like like if I'm wearing what is it, vertical stripes, it makes you look taller. It does, right? absolutely does. Yep. So maybe if we want our tiramisus to look a little, little taller. Bigger, yeah. A little more life to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Petite secret there, I love yes. it. There's nothing understated about these tiramisu verines. We'll layer the flavor by packing them full of coffee-soaked ladyfingers and our decadent cream cheese mousse. With Danielle's help, these will be stylish in the most delicious way. 
Yeah, hit that last one. And then we'll add a whole nother layer of those lady fingers. Oh, another layer. Okay. Yes. We're going to be we'll overflowing. Yes. Do I need more in there? Sound good? No, I think okay. that's perfect. Okay. Now we've assembled our layers into these verines. We need to pop it into the refrigerator to make our last garnish or accessory. I have all of our ingredients scaled here to make a dentel. A what? A dentel. <laughs> A dentel is just a type of garnish. It actually comes from the French word for lace, which makes perfect sense with today's guest. Ah, so beautiful. I thought that that would be really yes. nice. So it's like this little lacy extra texture on top. Yeah. Because I know we have a lot of layers in there, but nothing that we've added so far it's is like, very crunchy. Okay. And I really like to have all of those different textures, so we gotta get our crunch in. Okay, let's do it. The dental garnish is made by cooking water, corn syrup, sugar, and butter all the way up to 250 degrees. This is going to allow the sugar to start to set up so that way after we bake it, it will be nice and crispy and crunchy. And you may or may not have one of these. I do not have one of those. <laughs> Your husband may or may not Maybe. have one of these. I don't know. This is a laser thermometer. Okay. So I know with COVID and all of that, everybody's been ah, taking their temperatures. And you know, I don't want any extra dishes. So I don't want to have to clean that candy thermometer. Okay. So I'll use the laser Just laser thermometer. it, yeah. After we get our sugar to 250 degrees, we are going to add some cocoa powder to it, along with our cocoa nibs and some crushed up pieces of coffee. And then we're going to oh, wow. stir this together. And then we're just gonna pour this out onto okay. my Silpat lined sheet Let me pan. see you do that, since so that's nice and hot. It is very nice and hot. Okay. I'm gonna pour it out. It smells divine. It smells so good and rich. We'll need to bake this dentel at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. This is gonna allow it to get nice and crispy. All of our components are ready. Now it's time to put together the whole ensemble. Our dentel looks awesome. It's kind of lacy. I see all that I texture I do see that there. lace. And we took it out of the oven and we let it cool off a little bit and really firm up. So now it's time to smash it. Okay. This is really fun. Let me see you do this. I'm gonna kind of peel Ooh. it off. And wow. Then, like karate chop. Really? So there's no like method to this. We just kind of go. No, and you can help mm. me out with it too. Okay. We'll really just so. break Ooh. things up. Oh my gosh, it does have amazing texture. Right? It's kind of fun. It's gonna taste oh, like it smells coffee. so good. Yes, and I like to leave it in kind of big, big pieces. chunks. I like to be a little bit dramatic with these accessories. <laughs> you know, like sometimes you just need that like mm -hmm. that wild thing. extra. Just... I know. Yeah, sometimes you just need it. <laughs> I know the dentel is a whole nother kind of harder thing to make. If you want to leave this accessory off, you absolutely can. Now it's time for our finishing touches. A dusting of cocoa powder, various sizes of the dentel, and of course, my favorite, some chocolate covered coffee beans. I think okay. it's ready to go. I think we're ready to we go gonna to the party. Eat? Are we going to taste it? We have to try oh it, God, right? I'm so excited. Okay. Got those beautiful layers, oh, that so coffee good. gelée It on looks the amazing. I don't even know if I can eat it. It's too pretty too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you can. <laughs> you know you can eat this. People always say it looks too pretty to eat, but trust me, I'll get you a spoon. Oh my gosh. So good. You got a good crunch in yours. Mm -hmm. I hear it. Oh my gosh. So, it's so rich. It tastes amazing with the coffee. Mm -hmm. I love it. Wow. This is not your typical tiramisu. The very bottom has that smooth coffee gelée. It is nice and soft and just melts on the palate. Next, you're gonna taste that creamy mousse with the caramel macchiato powder in there. Oh my goodness, it tastes so good. It really breaks up all of that coffee flavor. Next up, we have the dusting of the cocoa powder. I also can't get enough of coffee, so I have these chocolate-covered espresso beans. 
yum. We couldn't leave off our last accessory. The final garnish is that coffee cocoa nib dentel. It is so nice and crunchy. I like to use that and scoop it into the tiramisu to really enjoy this dessert. Mm, so good. I can't, it's so good. Thank you so much for doing this oh with me gosh. today. Thank you so much That's, for coming here. I mean, a lot of pressure, but <laughs> you might, might be able to do it. <laughs> At least some of the layers. For right? sure, definitely. <laughs> Maybe not every single step, but that's okay. Okay, I'm, I can handle that. <laughs> it was so fun to cook with Danielle today. I think we both learned a thing or two. And thank you for joining me in my kitchen. And I'll see you next time on Plated with me, Rebecca Reed. It was amazing. Rebecca is so much fun. And this is to die for. Are we weird? Yeah. In that workout, girl. Yeah, it's in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get into character yeah, over here. <laughs> the most surprising part is probably the KitchenAid. I was a little terrified of the KitchenAid at first. Now I think I can maybe actually use my KitchenAid for the first time since I got it as a wedding president like five years ago. So I don't know. I'm, let's do it. As you can tell, I know nothing about any of this. <laughs> I totally think the next Shop Danny party needs some tiramisu cups. And I might have to call Rebecca on some FaceTime because she's gonna have to walk me through it a little bit, but I think I can do it. I don't know. You Let's hope I can do this. Yeah. Let's yeah. hope I can do this. So good. I feel like I can't. It's so good. Oh. <laughs>